may not see them, there are many organisms living in the soil around us. The number and variety of species living in the soil are often good indicators of how well a region can support life. To determine a region's ability to support life, a researcher may collect soil samples and test them for biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of organisms living in an area and the genetic differences between those organisms. Biodiversity is part of the subject of ecology, which is the study of how organisms interact with one another and with their environment. In this lab, we will use two common methods to determine the biodiversity of various soil samples. We collected soil samples from five different ecosystems. An ecosystem is a system of living organisms interacting with biotic and abiotic factors in their environment. The five ecosystems for our soil samples are a field, a lawn, a forest with coniferous trees, a forest with deciduous trees, and a stream bank. Each ecosystem contains billions of organisms, vertebrates, invertebrates, plants, fungi, bacteria, and sometimes even humans, living together in balance. Since it would be impossible to study all the organisms in each ecosystem, we will limit our ecological survey to a small community of invertebrate organisms living within each ecosystem. The word community often refers to groups of people living in an area, but this word has a slightly different meaning to an ecologist. In ecological terms, a community is two or more groups of organisms occupying the same area at the same time and experiencing at least some degree of interaction. For ease of study, we group the organisms of each soil sample into five categories of invertebrates. Insects, arachnids, segmented worms, roundworms, and myriapods. To collect the invertebrate organisms from a soil sample, we use a device known as a Berlazy trap. At the top of the Berlazy trap is a funnel with a mesh screen. The screen holds the soil sample in place, but it allows tiny organisms to pass through. Organisms that pass through the screen drop into a small, clear collection jar at the bottom of the trap. The collection jar contains 20 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol, which preserves the organisms so we can examine them later. We are ready to add soil from our first sample to the funnel. We must be careful not to force any soil through the screen. Next, we place the Berlazy trap under a lamp. The heat of the lamp dries out the soil, which forces the invertebrates to burrow deeper into the sample. Eventually, the invertebrates fall through the screen into the collection jar. We repeat the procedure with soil from the other four soil samples. We allow the Berlazy traps to sit under the lamp for three days. After three days, we are ready to examine the results and determine biodiversity using two methods. The first method produces a number called species richness. The second method produces a value called the Shannon Index. We will record our observations in a table so you can compare the results. First, we will examine the organisms collected from the field ecosystem soil sample. Since some of the organisms are quite small, we will transfer them to a petri dish and examine them under the stereo microscope. While looking through the microscope, we move the members of each invertebrate category to a separate section of the petri dish we move all ants, beetles, and other insects to one section of the petri dish. We move all spiders, ticks, and other arachnids to another section. 
we move all earthworms, which are segmented worms, to another section. We move all roundworms, which are worms with smooth sides, to another section. We move all centipedes and other myriapods to the remaining section. Now that the invertebrates have been sorted into categories, we count the number of organisms in each category and record these numbers in our table. We see that the soil sample from the field ecosystem has eight insects, five arachnids, two segmented worms, 12 roundworms, and three myriapods. We follow the same procedure for the organisms found in each of the other soil samples and record those numbers on our table. Species richness is a count of how many different species categories exist in a community. Since we found members of all five invertebrate categories in the field sample, the species richness of that soil sample is five. Notice that this value has been recorded in the species richness column on the table for the field sample. Since the same is true for the lawn sample and each of the forest samples, each of those soil samples also has a species richness of five. We did not find any arachnids or myriapods in the stream bank sample. We did find insects, segmented worms, and roundworms. So this soil sample has a species richness of three. According to species richness, the field, lawn, and forest communities have the same biodiversity. The stream bank has less biodiversity. Species richness tells us how many species categories exist in a sample, but it does not tell us how widely distributed those species are. The distribution of species within a community is another indication of biodiversity. In this example, Community A has 40 ants and 40 spiders. Community A has a species richness of two, since two categories of organisms exist in the community. The distribution of organisms in Community A is even, but that fact is not reflected in the species richness number. In another example, Community B has 70 ants, but only 10 spiders. Community B also has a species richness of two, but the distribution of organisms in Community B is uneven. Both Communities A and B have the same number of species and the same species richness, but the biodiversity of each community is vastly different because of the distribution of the organisms. To indicate how many species categories exist in a community and how those organisms are distributed within the community, ecologists use the Shannon Index. The Shannon Index uses the same data that was used to determine species richness but the data is calculated differently. A Shannon index places a greater value on species categories with many organisms and a lesser value on species categories with fewer organisms. A Shannon index ranges from zero to seven. If you recall, biodiversity is the variety of organisms living in an area. If organisms in only one species category live in a community, then that community has no variety of organisms, so it has no biodiversity. The Shannon index of this community would be zero. In this example, Community C has 76 organisms. Since all 76 organisms are in one species category, the species richness is one but the Shannon index for community C is zero. A community with organisms evenly distributed among several species categories would have a higher Shannon index. In this example, community D also has 76 organisms, but they are evenly distributed among four species categories, 
Community D has a species richness of 4. Determining a Shannon index requires some complex mathematics, so we will not go through the steps of calculating the Shannon index at this time. Instead, we will provide you with the Shannon index values for this experiment. The Shannon index values and the species richness numbers indicate the biodiversity and the potential for supporting life. The Shannon index for Community D is 1.36. A community with the same species richness, but with organisms less evenly distributed, would have a lower Shannon index. In this example, Community E also has 76 organisms in four species categories, so its species richness is 4, the same as Community D. However, since most of the organisms are in one category, the Shannon index is only 0.27, which shows less biodiversity. For a community to have a Shannon index of 7, the highest possible biodiversity, that community would need to have many organisms in thousands of species categories. On our table, the Shannon index has been recorded for each of the soil samples. Notice that the soil from the stream bank has the lowest Shannon index, as well as the lowest species richness. From this, we conclude that the stream bank ecosystem has the lowest biodiversity and the least potential to support life. Even though the soil from the field, lawn, coniferous forest, and deciduous forest have the same species richness, the soil from the deciduous forest has a higher Shannon index. Since the soil from the deciduous forest has a high species richness and the highest Shannon index, we conclude that the deciduous forest ecosystem has the highest biodiversity. This means the deciduous forest ecosystem has the greatest potential to support life. In our next lab, we will continue a study of ecology by testing the quality of a vital life resource, water. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs> <laughs>